From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge of Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Maine Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. By Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And by Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. Now, from the Woodshed Studios in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me, as always, Ryan Eldridge. Hi, everybody. Maggie Morrill. Hi. Today, we are here with Andrew Silsby, who is the president and CEO of Kennebec Savings Bank. Put your smart cap on. Right. <laughs> and just as a disclaimer, he's the Kennebec Savings Bank is a sponsor of this, ep- <laughs> this podcast, and we use them quite a bit, so this may be a bit of a love fest, but it will be ah, good. Let it happen. Yeah, exactly. We keep it local, right? We keep the love local. And we believe in them, so why not promote them? They've actually believed in us. Absolutely. But you can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, our Facebook page, Instagram, Kennebec Cabin Company YouTube channel, and check out our online store at ShopKennebecCabinCompany.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Hero Media Network, connecting small businesses with new customers, Hammond Lumber Company, the official building materials supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company. And drum roll. Kennebec Savings Bank. <laughs> helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. It's a long time. It is a long time. So uh, good to see everyone. I haven't seen you guys in a while. I know. How was Puerto Rico? It was awesome. <laughs> it was, you know, like we've, since I've met you guys, you've brought me around the world and it's been awesome. Like yeah. all I did was like went out west skiing and but we went to all these, we went to Costa Rica, we went to Guadalupe, and you know, I'd stop in Puerto Rico and go to another island. I never gave it a chance, but it's really growing on me. You drive to Boston, it's a direct flight, especially in this world right now. It's so it was a direct flight? Three and a half hours. Wow. You can, you can leave West Guider and be at this place in Penulas, which is on the south, south coast that we rent, in less than 12 hours. It's awesome. And same place you went? Last year. Last year. Bill, I'm... I haven't told you this yet, but I'm building some relationships so we can get some warm weather work and going on. Nice, nice, it's, nice. Um, and what, what I loved about it, though, it's like my Home Depot car I worked there. Yeah. You know, there's other stores there we have accounts at. Yeah. You know, and like people, everyone there wears a mask, even outside. We were going to national parks and people wearing a mask. I, they're just, they're, it's just a different mindset down there. And like they really take pride in their island, but they welcome you too from coming down there. They're like seeing people spend the money. Great. And it was 85 every day. 85 every day. I, I actually forgot what time, what day it was. And that never happens. Wow. Yeah. The island life. So between getting COVID and this fabulous vacation, I am trying to like slow down. Probably won't happen, but you guys are laughing. That's when you go. Maybe for a few weeks. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're uh, headed into like, 2022. Well, no, yeah, days are getting longer now. So awesome. And we've had, I mean, this winter has not been that great. And it's been, I mean, today was like a spring day. We need a little stretch of winter. We need some snow. We, we need, need some, some cold snow weather. Really, really bad. I feel bad for all our friends who want to fish and like snowmobile. Like. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody who was driving down from, I think, up Prescott Isle area. And he said lakes are just starting to freeze over right now, up even that far north. Didn't Jedi have to drive like almost like, like five hours to go sledding? Yeah. It's weird word. But hopefully it's coming. It'll be here. You know what? You know what's happening. I hate to say this. Everything's getting. Ch- Remember, we about five years ago, like, oh, September's a new August. Well, we didn't think that. You know, February's a new January. That right. Winters right, are right, going right. later. Yeah. So, I would just get one punch, concise, and then right into spring. Yeah, I'd much rather get a big snowstorm. None of this ice. Yeah. No. I mean, I I love ice, ice baby, but not <laughs> not living it. How's skiing going? It's okay. You kick a butt. Um, not yesterday. Not yesterday? No. But you're out there. That's all that matters. You that's keep right. You're racing. That. You're racing. Yeah, and you're not like your uncle. You're not on the bench, at least. So, hey, there's <laughs> something to be said in that. Yeah. Not so much. We need some more snow. And it's Nor- Nor's racing, too, right? Nor's, Nori's on she's, the team. Yeah. She's a freshman, so she's not. You know what it is about Nori? You, you, Maggie is like, Maggie is just great at whatever she does. But I know how much time and effort you put. She, you focus, you know, and you're a hard worker. Nori just like, do, 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 and go out and like have a great run once in a while. Yeah. Just like, don't yeah. even know, like, you, well, have it. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing the, like, the, not to put you on the spot, but the difference in the other personalities they grow up. Oh, completely. 
Completely. Still can't pick my favorite, though. So Fletcher got a PS4 for Christmas. Nice. Yep. What did you get for games? Uh, Gran Turismo, a Sonic game, and the newest MLB game. Oh, he caught the show or something? The show, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to come out and play video (laughs) games some night. So that's what Fletcher and I have been doing. We're in the minors still. Yeah. But it's it's fun. Does he now, (laughs) is that in the new living room or the old one? New living room. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a good Christmas. It was long. Kids are back in school now. Yeah, and we got to watch the uh, Mimi Eva episode before we left. That yep. was awesome. That's right. We all watched that together. I think we were sitting there. We had that moment. It's like, we're living our life, but you don't step outside and like, well, we're all sitting here watching ourselves on TV. <laughs> like when you actually think that, it's freaky. <laughs> it Isn't is. it? It is. Yes. And you realize how lucky we are. So. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, everybody. Yeah, and the show, na- it's now on Magnolia. Magnolia. It's Look, finally here. I was kind of scared. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Of Chip and Joanna? No, but the, no, I love them, but they they just have there's such a big thing, and they got all this energy, and I feel like we're gonna it's gonna we're gonna put our seatbelts on. Like we think about how far we've all come in the pandemic. You know, we're gonna be coming out of the pandemic. We're gonna have Chip and Joanna on our. We're gonna be on their team. Like, look out! Look out! Look out! It'll be good. It'll be good. But before we, you know, we look out, put the seatbelt on, um, we have a short break coming up. And this is going to be a cool little video of our good friends at Saddleback Mountain making snow. Uh, it's coming. You know, I know we haven't had a lot of storms, but they're making snow up there. Conditions are good. So head up there and you're probably going to see one of us pretty soon. So check out this video when we get back to you. here which is snow and uh, mother nature helps us out oftentimes with some pretty sweet storms but in the early season we make snow ourselves I just kind of like the idea of how the job literally its whole purpose is just to make people have a good day you know The snow you make today is going to be there till closing day. So do it right. Snowmaking is a tough job. Making snow is a job that is not for everybody. There are a special group of people that like to make snow, but the groups of people that like to make snow are really good at it and really proud of what they do. So am I. In general, people are going to respect kind of what we do out here just because they see the elements uh, that we're doing that in, and they see the uh, just the physicality behind everything that we do. But don't feel bad for us; like we're having a ball. This is good stuff. Uh, it's hard work, but um, it's all for a cause that we love. At the end of the day, as long as we uh, all had a good time and we we're safe about our operations, new green weaver is closed. We produce the snow, then. Uh, Everyone feels pretty good about that. This charge is open and good. That's one thing snowmakers are around here, is Swiss Army knives. Because <laughs> when we need something, we need it. It's not like something we want. It's something that we absolutely need right now. Six to 32. So if everybody else is busy, we kind of have to take it upon ourselves to figure out how to fix our problems. You know, what we're doing here is only to make our guest experience better. And that's all we want to do is make our guest experience get better. We want more guests. We want better skiing. We don't want to be just this ski area like everybody else says our skiing is better. We really want our skiing to be better. This place definitely just hits different. It skis different. This strong sense of community up here. Just last night I was out at a restaurant and I heard someone talking about oh I, I've been coming to this place since I was a kid it's like a family to me and it just hit home for me I was like glad that I moved here for it to hear other people that didn't know who I was sitting right next to them talking about how great the conditions were and how great the atmosphere is here that's so cool all those hours like making the snow for you know 
15, 16 hours and going out and grooming it and stuff, like it's worth it when everybody loves it. If the customer doesn't have a good experience, if they feel like they're just a number and the, and the company's out just to get the dollar, uh, they won't come back. Uh, people want to have fun. People want their families to have fun. People want to walk away with that. I had the best day. I had the best day skiing today that I've ever had. And even if it's after a, a, a nice event, people want that experience. So this is Saddleback Lake. This is where we get our water for our pumping system. Here, the watershed empties into Saddleback Lake. So every bit of water that we use on the mountain comes right back to Saddleback Lake. We replenish the water, we just borrow it, we give it right back. We don't dust and run, which means that we don't do the minimum required in minimum weather just to get a trail open. Dust and run is basically just like giving a little skim coat to everything to make it look like there's a bunch of snow on there. And all that does is get you a trail open for a day and then you have to revisit that trail and keep laying snow onto it, which puts a lot more stress on your crew and your equipment. Uh, we got a lot of new equipment this year. We've been putting fixed gear on a couple trails, but like a lot of mountains primarily rely on fixed gear like this. Whereas we're still moving carriage guns around, lots of fans. So there's a lot more cat time, a lot more use of the cat putting our stuff in certain places. But that kind of allows us to put it exactly where we need it, instead of just having to connect the dots with something that's fixed in place. And this year we got a really good crew. Everybody's got a good head on their shoulders. They've been working together for the year already. So there's that camaraderie already. And they're all picking up what we're teaching them and they're having fun doing it. This is a really strong team here. You know, everyone's getting along, everyone's got each other's back. Work ethic is a thing that comes under scrutiny these days. This group, you almost have to make this group go home. Everybody comes to work and they, and they see it to the end. Everybody's extremely proud of what they do and how they do it here. And we are back with Andrew Silsby. Andrew, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me. Nice to see you. Biggest, yeah. biggest question of the day. Water, coffee, or beer today? Oh, beer. Beer, awesome. And what do we have today, Chase? We have Dash, nice. Blueberry. There's it gone. Thank you. Have you tried the Dash yet? I have not. It's not really. We, should, we might have to amend it. Water, coffee, beer, or hard seltzer? Hard <laughs> seltzer, yeah. We do have a, a beer here if you prefer that, but... I'll what try it. No, I'll try this. All right. Great. great. So that Dash has a good story. Um, it's a company that's owned by one of our own, Erica and her brother. Um, they just started out. And if you know, everyone's being healthy and stuff and trying to stay off the beer, it's great for your waistline. Love it. I endorse it. This one may have gotten a little shooken up. <laughs> a lot, and, and you get to, And you get to keep that glass. It's a parting gift for it. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> I see the one they gave me. I got a big chip in it. <laughs> We are starting off the new year right, huh? Yeah, we are. Yeah, happy new year. Here's to you. Cheers. Yeah. I don't know what the proper protocol is, but it's all right. That's all right. <laughs> so I've been, I was thinking today, I'm like, all right, what questions do I have for Andrew? What questions? It's kind of a different mindset, isn't it? It like, is. It is. And I didn't want to get too deep into the financials. So I, I was more <laughs> curious about the history of Kennebec Savings Bank and, you know, when it got started, how long it's been around and... You know, it's, it's always been right there on the Rotary in Augusta for as long as I've been alive. Well, actually, it goes way back. I'm so sure 18, that does. 1870. Past the Rotary, huh? So actually, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot here, and I'll, I'll bore all your listeners, but um, Joshua Chamberlain was Civil War hero. Yeah. Uh, drink to him. Yeah. Here's Cheers. to you. 20th Maine. 
And uh, so he comes back. He has a robust political career. So he's the governor of the state of Maine. He does an address to uh, the legislature and to the state of Maine in, uh, the, in early January of 1870. And he encourages banks to form because he thinks that's the key to getting out of uh, the Civil War and, and rebuilding the country. And he just kicked major butt. I mean, he, he is on top of the world. So he, like the 20th Maine kicks him butt. Yeah. So a bunch of local people got together in, um, right after that speech, and they decided to form Kennebec Savings Bank. And they had to go to the Maine legislature. They had an act passed, and Joshua Chamberlain signs our charter into existence because he's the governor of the state of yeah. Maine. Cool. And um, they formed, and uh, we had three account deposits the first day we opened. <laughs> one was for three hundred dollars. One was for a hundred dollars, and one was for ten dollars. How much was three hundred bucks back then? You think? Oh, it was probably five grand, wow. six grand, yeah. fair amount of money. I'll take for my folks. money I got now back then. I'll be <laughs> loaded. You'd be, you'd be all right. And um, and so it was uh, basically established for the common person to save money and buy a home. Prior to that, uh, everything was done on the barter system. So you got lumber, I got yeah. cows. I'm going to give you milk for. And that system started to break down. And so uh, banking really started to come into fruition about 1850 to 1890. A lot of banks formed. So we were formed down on Water Street. On Water Street. Water. In Augusta. Yep. Yeah. We've had only four locations in 152 years. Four uh, locations. And three down on Water Street. And in 1959, we moved up to State Street. Yep. Moving on out. now. Yeah. Very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, the automobile, and we that was a, reportedly the first drive through window in the city of Augusta where you could really? do your banking from your car, no cares, no worries. <laughs> or your carriage, right? Because <laughs> if you're down on Water Street, there's no right. drive throughs yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Everybody's parking on, the, on downtown. So we have been operating uh, for, for uh, well, I think in, in March will be 152 That's years, wild. all with the same name. And since then, you have an op- Waterville? We're in Waterville, Farmingdale, Farmingdale uh, Freeport, and well, Winthrop. Freeport, I didn't yep. know that. Yep, we've got a great office in Lower Main Street in Freeport. That's been great. So when Kennebec Savings comes up, in my mind, I've got a funny story. It's how beautiful your grounds are. That Augusta is just always gorgeous. Oh, yes. And the, the old building. And, you know, I grew, I lived on Sheldon Street in Farmingdale, and you guys bought that old property and, and then did what you did. And, like, just to build that building in the style and the class of the old feder- federal houses with the captain's houses – was amazing and like it's just your properties are some of the best kept in the in the oh, for, I mean even yeah the branch right across the street I mean the flowers in are Manchester all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 well we uh, we definitely take pride in our properties yep. um, you can say people people often say you know you do, do you spend too much money on gardening but what people don't realize is plants grow so usually the gardener tells me it's time to open a new branch because they need to <laughs> they need to move the plants right thin the another, bulbs out yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and, you know, some of it is a donation. We uh, always participate with Parkinson Society, and so we do their Garden of Hope. And it's really a donation to the Parkinson Society, but they give us bulbs, so uh, we plant them. So there's, um, you know, it isn't quite as much money as folks think it is, um, but we do take very uh, you take know, great pride yeah. of it. And we hire a lot of folks. Uh, we have local folks. Local folks who, um, uh, the lawn, uh, shrubbery, uh, tree guys, uh, we've, we've got, you know, everybody. Yeah. I think it's fun. I'm a recent convert to you guys in the last maybe five years. Um, my grandmother was a vice president of Garden of Savings, so I was with them for oh, a long yeah, time. Yeah. And then on Main State Employees Credit, you know, I still have an account there. But my first house I bought, that loan got sold, and I was like dealing with people in Miami. And back then, I wasn't nearly as good as paying my bills as I am now. <laughs> but I mean, it was so confusing. And there's such a value as you get older into, into like having a bank that is local, that keeps, stays local, and that you can build, you know, relationship with. Long term. And I never thought I'd say that ten years ago. You know, like oh, pff, you just put your money there, you don't even see it. You know, but it's a lot to be said about a local bank. And like, you guys come very, very top. I re- very highly recommend it by myself now, too. Well, appreciate that. Yeah. We we don't sell any mortgages, so yeah, we keep them all. And uh, not a lot of banks can say that these days. Yeah. And it's important to us. We don't have to do all of the things that secondary market mortgages require. Mm-hmm. So our closing costs tend to be a, a, quite a bit less. And um, you're dealing with the person who's going to make the loan decision. Yeah, right. 
and generally speaking in secondary market lending, uh, most folks don't necessarily know that behind the scenes, but the person you're talking to is not the person who makes the decision and it's by design. Yeah. And um, we've just never gone down that path and it's, it's, it's huge. We've, we've, we've really grown, uh, particularly in the last five years um, and people really just value that. So we're happy to be able to provide that service. And, the bank's been very successful. That's awesome. I think people going back to that small town feel, and that's one silver line in the pandemic. People are going back to like the old slow way of life, like sent, you know, let's slow down, let's stay local, and kind of, do well, our thing. Yeah, part of I mean, part of the world is, or part of the country, but like there's also the, you know, the big businesses, you know, merging and all that stuff. That you know, it's kind of a crossing paths and contradictions. Because you just merged with Kennebec. We merged with Kennebec Federal Savings, right, 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 up in, right, up in Waterville. Yep. Um, so they were a small bank that had been in existence for about eighty-five years. Yeah. Um, they had done a wonderful job, uh, twenty employees. But it it does get harder and harder to operate if you don't have scale. Right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we ended up uh, bringing their folks in with us. Their current CEO had been there for about forty-four years. Wow. A uh, long, uh, distinguished career, and uh, ultimately retired. He had a plane ticket to to Florida at five o two on Friday <laughs> afternoon after the no, no looking back. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish him well, but he did a great job. But it's uh, it's been fun. And uh, way back, eight, uh, 90, 1995, we merged with uh, Waterville Savings and Loan, too. But okay. Waterville community has been absolutely fabulous for us. There's a lot it's, going on in Waterville right now, it's, too. It's it amazing. Is, it is hopping. Um, and it's been a great community for us. Yeah. Then that, there's another mill. Did you see that? An uh, out-of-state developer has signed up to fix the mill up there to put a lot of money into it. Yeah, the like, front one. And then what? Um, the, you know, the college is down up there. They've totally revitalized it. It's, it's amazing. Yep. I mean, it's probably a little controversial. Some folks uh, don't yeah. always like pr- uh, progress, but I think it's uh, I think it's great. It's really the vibrancy in Waterville has yeah. really come alive. Absolutely. You know, we had some fun up there at Colby College. We, we, that's still paying <laughs> dividends. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. So I got a question. What is the difference but in layman's terms between a credit oh, union here we go. and a bank? Well, that's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> I've been saving and it. It's going to... It's going to take a few minutes for me to answer. <laughs> Perfect. We got time. All right. We got, we got, we got time. Well, first and foremost, we are a mutual organization. So not a lot of people understand that. 90% of the banks in the United States are stock-held institutions. Only 10% are mutual organizations. People don't always think about the word mutual. Mm-hmm. No one owns Kennebec Savings Bank. So when the, that. that's, that's why the legislature has to be involved in allowing for a mutual organization to be created. So a, a good example would be like a water district is also an organization yeah. that sits on its own. Sure. Uh, hospitals, most of the hospitals kind of sit on their own. And um, so in many respects, we are more similar to a credit union as a mutual organization than we are... Um, maybe Bank of America, that's a stock-held uh, organization. So there are differences between credit unions and banks, yeah. but there are differences between banks, too, and uh, the mutuality piece is a big deal. So all the, the profits that the bank makes stay within the organization. They don't go anywhere. We we're you know, we're going to probably talk about giving back to the community, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and certainly. So most stock-held institutions actually pay a dividend on their stockholders. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have any stockholders, so we don't pay any dividend, so we give that money back to the community. So this year, well, 2021, last year, uh, now uh, was $1.1 million wow. that went back to the community. So we've been doing that every year. Wow. Um, and, and it's, it's a lot a, of work giving away yeah. money, actually. <laughs> but it's, it's also hard. investing in yourself. You're exactly. investing in your community, which is awesome. And we love it. Uh, it keeps us uh, a pulse on the community. We get to understand all this, the needs of the community. Um, the reality is if the community is healthy, the bank's going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're investing in our own future too. Yeah. Uh, but it's also fun to see all these organizations thrive. And yeah. we got we got a lot of great stuff going on in our nice. – Augusta area is just – this whole area is just thriving. It's crazy to see, like, all what's going on. Like, all the young kids that are sticking around. Like, the, the area is just growing exponentially. And young people are staying here finally. And, like, it's a good place to be. And I think the secret's out. 
There's a secrets out. There's a, <laughs> secrets I should stop out. talking about it. Actually, <laughs> too late. There's a philanthropic culture that has really I've seen over the last 20 years. That's that's happened. If you if you had come into my office 20 years ago and said that this community, as a greater area, would um, fundraise and raise over 75 million dollars for capital projects in this community, I would have said there's no way. That just the culture wasn't there. But every one of these capital campaigns that have happened in the community have built uh, more and more culture. And there's a huge philanthropic culture now. That's awesome. Uh, that's helping all of these organizations thrive. Just, it's fun to see. Yeah, especially being from here. Like, you know, we always just. Right, exactly. I know most of myself and my friends are like, oh, I'm never going back there, you know. And then you get in your mid 30s, you're like, huh. you realize it's a pretty darn good place to be. Yeah. I but remember to- that, Maggie. What? <laughs> she will. She will. She will. You'll be back someday. <laughs> no. Well, Ryan, I'm looking over your shoulder and seeing the Daggett's Market uh, yeah. calendar that's 1977, and my parents moved uh, to Manchester in 1977, and I used to ride my bike down oh, to no kidding. Daggett's Market. <laughs> so, it's awesome. It is. Remember the big, huge great... tree that was out there? Yes. It's, yes. So I remember Amazing. that. There's two trees I remember my life. That, that's one of them, and then the, at the old tree at the end of the road over here was always the first one to change. Yep. Yeah, that just came down recently. And Manchester's really grown. Like, I mean, and what we've had here, we've been so lucky with this location. Like, just perfect location for us because it's really the center of our wheel. Like, Chase is 50 minutes that way. Ash and I are 50 minutes that way. Dixie's that way. And, like, you know, when we set, set we've picked this location. It was more because we were looking around. There wasn't a lot. We wanted the nieces and nephews to be safe if they were working here. But we didn't think about how close we were to the interstate. Like, it's just, this place is a tourist track. People yeah. just, it's so easy to get to. It's yeah. its amazing. And everyone comes here. And then the people have been coming here and, like, staying in Augusta or staying in all these Airbnbs and just going out. And, like, the stories from the community people just taking taking care of people that come here are just awesome. It's, that, it doesn't stop. It's, like, it's pretty amazing. It is. A, it's a great community. And I went to Manchester Elementary School, which isn't very far. <laughs> and I had a crush on Mary Jo Gould, who lived next door to where you are right now. I'll get in trouble with that. We're getting, we're getting all the secrets. Huh? <laughs> so what you, what got you into banking? Did you go to college in so, finance? Or? Um, I ended up graduating from Miranda Cook yeah. um, here. Uh, go Bears! <laughs> Mag's all happy. Um, and then uh, I went to University of Maine, Orono, and uh, I finished my freshman year and thought, geez, I really need to get into the business world. Uh, so I went down to Farrell's and bought a suit. Remember Farrell's? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Chase, yeah, you guys my, have a history there. Yeah. 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 And then I uh, stuffed the tags in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the sleeve and then walked down uh, Water Street. And I did not stop at the first bank uh, that I saw because it was too intimidating. So I walked past the first one and I walked into the second one and asked for a job. And I got a job on the spot. Uh, that was North Star Bank, which ultimately uh, the following uh, year became Fleet Bank. So most people in Central Maine know that name. Is that what Betty Dix was for a yep. long time? Yeah, Betty yep. was Fleet yep. Bank. So uh, I worked there for eight years and then I was blessed to be able to move over to Kennebec Savings Bank as a young residential mortgage lender uh, for them and just celebrated my 28th year at the bank. So. Wow. Then lots Fantastic. of different positions and uh, great opportunities, but a lot of fun. Yeah. I shouldn't, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't tell you this. <laughs> I broke my femur in 2005, right? And it's the height of the f- predatory lending. Well, anyways, my buddy's like, do you want to help me? And I came and helped him do lo- loans. And, like, it was – I didn't know what I was doing. But, I was, I, you know, I went to math. I did a lot of math in college. And so I did went mortgage. Went to math. I went to math. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I went to – but I ended up doing mortgage broking. And it was just – I did, like, six months, and I actually saw what was going on. Like, yeah. And I got out of there, but it was just a crazy world. And it was like, that was predatory stuff, like stuff that wasn't right. And it made me see like what they were doing because you were going into these meetings and you were going over these people's finances and they were inflating the value of their house. You know, but you'd go in these people be crying because were, you were saving them. Right. But little did they realize, you know, without a fixed rate and stuff, like it was going to crash. And like, that's pretty much, pretty much what, I hope I don't have, I didn't cause a crash, but I mean, that Type of attitude caused. Well, yeah. I probably had a little hand. Remember that word mutual? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like just getting into that for a little little time was just wild. Like, and it's amazing how an industry like that can be so powerful, and people can do can do such good things like you guys. But people can it can do, have the bad ramifications as well. You got it. You got it. I mean, everybody makes their own choices. Yeah. 
But it's 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 fun to uh, we do a lot of commercial lending as well. We've sort of bridged out uh, beyond just uh, residential lending. We're probably most known for our residential lending yeah. efforts, but we do quite a bit of commercial stuff now, and it's really fun to to drive through the communities and and know that we had a hand in in some of this stuff. You know, we we play a small part. Sometimes it's a bigger part. Yeah. Um, but it's real rewarding from a from a career standpoint uh, well you guys helped us a lot oh absolutely we wouldn't be where we are right now without you guys remember that parking lot we got a price on that parking (laughs) lot and we're like it it blew our mind like you know that was what it feels like it was 10 years ago but three or four years ago and the parking lot was very expensive you know and we had katie vickers on speed dial yeah and we didn't think we'd ever fill it and now that parking we could take you could put five on top of each other yep and you know, you, we, I just parked in it. I yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. A little muddy today. Re- yeah, absolutely. And another another thing I gotta say is like I I always see you on Sunday mornings with a lot of friends on TV. Yeah, I get a big smile out of that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great show. You know, main life and we have a good time. Yeah, they do have a blast. I was like, I looked at Vanessa one day. Like, you got to figure it out. You're always eating great food and drinking. I mean, we're on TV, but we're building stuff and sweating. Like, <laughs> can I come over to your team? Right. I, the the most common thing I get uh, from being on that show is your beer went down really fast, because you guys know when you film they use a lot of footage, right, 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 right. right? And, <laughs> and and then they whittle it down to a four four minute segment, right? right? And it looks like I'm sucking the beer down really fast. But. Well, you don't know if you've had one or you've had five. <laughs> right. That's a good thing. Uh, but even that shows a testament to like you know what's going on in Maine and how popular Maine is right now and. Yeah, it's definitely in vogue. I would I would yeah. agree with that. Uh, there's a there's a lore to the, to this place, um, and the secret is out. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing a lot of out of state folks. I know you guys have talked. We're about to that blame before. for that too. I'm going to blame for a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, I, I see it as good stuff. <laughs> we know. <laughs> it's my favorite niece over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny. But the people that come here, just like they just everyone wants to be here, and they see like on our show or on Main Life how. You know, there's so much to do now, and there's so much to offer. And you know, I say like the six months of horrible weather. It's still people realize it's still worth it because how great our st- the state is. Yep, and the people. And the people. Yep, they're very friendly, and you know, we deal with a lot of folks who who come here. And I, I literally, I go to organization events. Not quite so many right now, but out of state folks will say, "I'm coming to your bank." Uh, because of well, your show on Main Life, we 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 highlighted uh, one that, of our employees. That's what I wanted. To, yeah, that's amazing. She yeah, saw the Ellie show. Beth. Yeah, yeah, and came up and like she's in the Bar Harbor branch, correct? Yeah. No, or, down in Freeport. Freeport. Sorry. So she, um, yeah, it's it's a great story because she was just looking. She and her roommate were trying to figure out where in the United States they wanted. They were over in, um, I think she was in Seattle. I, I may have that wrong. Um, and uh, she and her roommate were trying to search throughout the United States where to go, and they stumbled onto Main Life uh, on the internet and decided, okay, we're we're going to drive across country and we're going to go there. And then she decided she wanted to work at Kennebec Savings Bank, and yeah. we hired her. It was great. That's She's awesome. Been doing awesome. <laughs> yeah, where else does that happen? Like, you know, like it's just Maine. Like, I'm people are like, oh, would your show works other places? Yeah, it would work in some places, but I think Maine just makes it really, really special. Like. Cause you know you've all gone to other states, and you, I'm like, hey, like trying to make eye contact with people, and I'm like, yeah, what's that? We don't want to talk to me for. Why is he saying <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, that's like, <laughs> he'll make he'll make conversation anywhere with anybody. True. <laughs> so my son was telling me the other day. Uh, this was actually during the summer, and and he was down in Massachusetts, and he was out boating with uh, some friends down there, and he's l- waving to everybody in the boat because that's what we're right, doing. Oh, yeah. Maine, yes, right? you yes. Wave. Well, they don't wave back in Massachusetts uh, on the boat. It's the weirdest thing but yeah. you need help what's going on over there yeah yeah <laughs> and that's not very far away either no it Go really for... isn't but, but so what do you guys got are... planned coming up any any big news coming up just well we're uh trying to survive this crazy <sighs> residential uh, craze that's going on in terms of house values and this is a little bit slower time of year so our lending team gets to to rest a little Take bit a breath. Uh, which is kind of nice. I know how busy you guys have been, and yeah. but our team are right there know, with oh, us. Yeah, Absolutely, it's crazy. It's a it's a very strange last minute business. You know, mortgage lending. Uh, the closings come together the day before. You know, there's just there's this hustle bustle that yes. happens, and it's a fun. lot of paperwork, and a lot of paperwork. 
<laughs> Although we pride ourselves on on less paperwork, as, you know, selfless pitch here. But no. um, you know, we a typical purchase closing on the secondary markets like eighty signatures. Yeah, which is, that's a lot of paperwork, and ours is seventeen I, signatures. Sorry, that's not that, too bad. That's not. It's I better. don't want this to look like a Kennebec Savings Bank commercial, but like when <laughs> when the whole when everything went to crap with Corona, rates dropped. Right, I was at like I got a construction loan, I had a really good rate. But all my friends like refi. I call you guys up, and the you you pretty much it was minuscule what I had to do compared to somebody else. Yep, yep. You know, you guys knew my property, you knew it, the value of it, you knew what was going on, and like it was like a small fee and a couple signatures. Yep. Whereas my brother and other people going to refinance other banks, and they're three thousand dollars for this has to get another appraisal. Like it it was it was amazing how easy it was. Yeah, that's and that's great. a testament to like being a local bank and like what you guys do. That's my pitch. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll take it. That's a good pitch. <laughs> yeah, we did one closing, and I think we, I mean, it was the, supposed to happen the next day. And I had filled out some paperwork way back when, and I filled out the wrong thing with the IRS, and it wasn't going to happen. And Katie Vickers was running stuff around at like seven o'clock at night to make sure it happened. So that's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because you anything with, that needs to be done. To you've make, had a long history with Kenmec Savings, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We grew up in the shadow. Yeah. I mean, you guys do have the best lollipops. We do. <laughs> Maggie can testify to that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And dog bones. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you bring the dog to the I used to the pull in, yeah, go through the drive-thru with four kids in the back. And I, they'd be like, how many lollipops do you need, Chase? I'd be like, five, please. <laughs> what colors would you like? That doesn't matter. <laughs> They'll fight about it no matter what. <laughs> yeah, and you, you brought up, you know, like giving what you guys have done, like I took we worked with you guys was on the food drive and you guys have helped with the new Augusta food bank. Like, yeah. I, I, last year we did that, that whole uh, box food yeah. up at the civic center. And I was up there for hours giving out turkeys. We, the lines are crazy. Was, right? like, yeah. DOT was not very happy with that. <laughs> There's thousands it, though, wasn't it, it? it? It really shut down traffic yeah. in the city of Augusta. I mean, there were like 2,400 boxes, cars wow. that, that, that were given away in the course of about four or five hours. It was it was crazy. And you know, th there were a few situations that, you know, when you're putting a turkey in a car and there's a 10 day plate on there, it doesn't feel as good. Right. But, but most of those cars, sure, honestly, sure, sure. were really pretty rough situations and kids yeah. without car seats. And yeah. it was it was tough to see. Um, it's been, you know, this whole thing's been just a, a splash of cold water in terms of need and whatnot and what's going on in our community yeah and it, it's hard to it's, it's easy to forget how, how great lucky you are you know depending e, e, no matter where you are like there's people that are off if you have more money than god you there's still pe stuff you have to deal with like there's still people that you know you want to help yeah, out and what you you have, i think everyone around us is very grateful to be you know, well again yeah know, it's part of that local community spirit is you know, well, taking care of everybody. Yeah, and you guys are working on folks' camps. Yep. You've got a limited budget, yep. right, yep. usually, yep. and it's usually pushed right up against the, the edge of the budget, I assume. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've, we've been so lucky, and no offense to any homeowners, but we've really enjoyed the ones where a family scrapes together thirty or $40,000. Like, they, they would never get to do this, and all the family members come in, you know, three or four, and it's just because... It, they just appreciate it too much, and it's something that would never. Happen. It's like winning the lottery to them, yep. you know. And like, don't get me wrong, the people that we love working for people that can come in and afford it. But just seeing these families that would have never would have had this happen, and then that's a property that would have fallen into neglect and most likely got torn down and you know replaced with something yep. big and fancy and new. Which you know, there's nothing like that. But we just love saving the old places. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, we uh, main life. We went out to Jack Albor's place. Yeah. Out on Cuba Island. Yes. That was that was beautiful. That's Still one of my favorites. Yeah, pretty yeah. awesome spot for yeah. sure. Yeah, we've been lucky. Yeah. He's got he's got a uh, dock on both sides of the island. Yeah, he's so, got yeah. yeah. Sunrise, yeah. Yeah, sunrise <laughs> and sunset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tough to beat. Yeah. Um so Maggie has a few questions for you if we haven't already All right. taken most of them. Let's go, Maggie. Sometimes we do that. These are usually tough. Maybe we'll get more into the financial side of things. No, that's all. <laughs> you won't. I'm a, D, I'm a DYIR, you know. I, you know, we could talk about other things. Ah. <laughs> Heck yeah. We'll do an update. We'll follow up on right. what you've been working on. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure? Well, I guess. I'm not, now look at that one black, Marinica black bear giving it to another. <laughs> She's tough. Be kind. Of course. All right. This first question. 
is from at Susan underscore Riley. What is your favorite thing about living and working in Maine? Ooh, that's a good one. We've really already talked about a lot of this, just um, knowing all the people, the streets. I, Maine is one degree away. It's not yes. six or seven right. degrees away. <laughs> that is uh, very true. It's, it's quite amazing. And just um, the genuineness of people mm-hmm. here in Maine. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience. I've, I've grown up here, born here, and raised yeah. here, and, um, and my own kids. Uh, so it's hard for me to, to know what it's like in other places, but it feels pretty special to me. Do you have a favorite go-to place that you just, you know, off the beaten track? So I'm guilty of taking my boat on Cabo uh out to a lady's delight and, uh, and checking out and taking photographs of, of the lighthouse. So That's awesome. Morning or night. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, just beautiful out there. Man, two episodes ago, two episodes ago we were on Annabasta Cook, but they had a shot of ladies. I'll have to watch. It was one of the best shots I've ever seen with a drone in the ice. It was really cool. We did a show out in Maine Life and went out there and actually we got the, the uh, Commodore of the of the yacht club yeah. to take us out and, oh, nice. and gave us the whole history on an on an early Maine Life show and there were some really big spiders. I remember Aaron was not very happy about those spiders. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready for the next one? Sure. Okay. This one is from Margar Margo Kramer. How has the banking industry changed in the last two years with the pandemic? Well, uh, interesting enough, um, mortgage lending uh, took off. Nobody expected that, right? I don't think any of us thought that. Um, So the mortgage side of the business took off. Uh, Commercial customers uh, were scared to death that their business was going to fail. PPP loans came along and um, ultimately... Most businesses were very resourceful in cutting expenses, not employees, but expenses, pivoted really well and ended up having a better year in 20 than they ever thought they would. Yeah, and then 21 it. was an even better year. And so, and then there was a lot of stimulus dollars. So what's fascinating to me is the actual deposit side of the bank. You think about loans at a bank, but also the deposit side. We're just like uh, it's a wonderful life. You do, in fact, need deposits to be able to lend money. I wonder if that was your favorite Christmas movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so um, what's fascinating is the amount of deposit growth that has happened over this time period. So people have changed. They're not spending quite as much, yet the economy is still doing okay. That's good. Which is a little bit odd. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of savings going on in business savings, uh, personal savings. Uh, business and personal checking accounts, all of those are up significantly. Hmm. Interesting. Which is, yeah, so behavior has changed. Positive to hear. It yeah. is. Uh, behavior has changed. Um, you know, uh, Rob Brown over to Clock Marine, it's not very far from here. Um, you know, just lots of people buying boats. You know, people's habits have changed. I think they're probably not going to Disney and they're trying to right. buy a boat right. Uh, right. and spend it out on Cobbacy or some other lake. Yeah, yeah they say the bit, one of the biggest trends now is like outdoor kitchens and stuff and like boats or spending stuff you can enjoy your home in your home area, yep. which is great. Yeah, outdoor fireplaces. Outside. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Getting outside. How'd we do, Maggie? Good. That's all I have for He you. passed. That's it. <laughs> yes. Right, beautiful. <laughs> I was worried about that section. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining us, Andrew. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, we, awesome. thank you for everything you guys do for us. We wouldn't be where we are without you guys. I'm believing in us. Yeah, and I, I just got to throw in at the end here. I'm really disappointed Ashley's not here. She's my favorite. <laughs> we hear that all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had to forward it in. <laughs> well, now we know we're in on, on the lake. We'll come and see you in the boat this summer for sure. Sounds great. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Look thank forward you. to it. Take care. Good for talking banking, didn't we? No. we? no, I think so. We stayed away from numbers. <laughs> we stayed away from the math. <laughs> yeah. Can you help my credit score, my bank account? Right. <laughs> yeah, he's like, man, deposits are up. I'm just thinking, I've been like, <laughs> but all joking aside, like they, it's been a pleasure to be at work with them and like what they do to the community. Like, oh, completely. I feel lucky that we're 
we're involved with them. Yes. I mean, we're a small piece, and they've been around for so long that it's, yeah. Once again, I'm just gloating about Augusta these days. Ha, ha, ha. What's become of this world? All right. All right. So now we are on to Project Pointers, which is brought to us by our friends at Benjamin Moore, the official paint and stain supplier of the Kennebec Cabin Company. If you've got a question for us, submit a short video with your question to podcast at maincabmasters.com. And don't drink, don't forget to include your name, where you're from, as much detail as possible, and we'll answer as best we can. And I'm just going to be honest. Like, what the heck's going on? We haven't had hardly any of these. Like, we want some good videos. Like, I don't think we've answered all. I mean, we, we're pretty knowledgeable. I don't think we've answered everyone's questions. So yeah, send us some stuff. Try to stump us. Or we're just that. Laissez faire. They haven't, don't want to send us anything. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, we got more knowledge in there. Let's send, try to stop. New us. year. Yeah. Let's start off fresh. Send us some videos. Send us some cool stuff. I think we should encourage people to send us photos because the video yeah. thing, it's, the files are too big. So they're not send us photos. photos. So send us photos with your questions. Send us photos with your question. Skip yeah. the video. Is something Just bothering you at your photos. neighbor's house? Send it to us. We'll tell you how to <laughs> you know, get to the fix it. Maybe we'll even call them up for you. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> Inundate us. <laughs> what do we got this week? Okay. This one is from Sue Palizer. I have recently purchased a camp on the lake that I spent all of my summer at during my youth. When the camp was purchased, the existing heating system was fueled by kerosene and the heating ducts were located in the ceiling of one of this one story cabin. Can already smell it. During the yeah. process of raising the camp to replace the rotted foundation, I had a flat fuel tank installed under the camp and insulated, thinking we could use as regular heating fuel, which costs less than kerosene. My question is, what is the most efficient manner to heat this cabin? Heat pumps have been recommended to me as being a very efficient manner to heat our camp in our attempts to winterize, which would allow me to fall back on regular heating fuel as a backup source. However, I'm questioning if I would be better prepared for the northern Maine winters by having some type of wood-burning source for heat or considering solar or anything else you might recommend. Well, she gave us a clue. She's in northern Maine, so we yep. got something going on. First of all, don't let the smoking room be above that tank. Whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> don't try and heat the tank. Ah, There's a lot going on there, but I'm all about heat pumps, but you have to do a lot to have a heat pump be efficient. That, that's exactly that, you know, right. That's exactly right. Like a lot of these camps we do now, like we'll put in a di- like we'll, we'll meld the old with the new, and we are up to code and stuff, and it's great for that area. But those areas where it's not, it's old and there's gaps, like it's not the most effective. They are, yes, if it's not insulated, and you know, heat pumps are good. I think to minus fifteen. You know, they drop in efficiency. It's but getting better. Yeah, they're getting, getting more better. Efficient. Yeah, but it's a great. It's a great heat source, but it's not reliable as your primary heat no. source yet. No. Um, so I, I'm a huge fan of propane monitor heaters. Yeah. Uh, there's Renai, which is a brand, and then also, I believe Empire. There's Renai and Empire are the two major ones, and Empire can run without electricity. <laughs> so if, that's awesome. You know, if you're in an area where you don't have electricity or you lose power a lot, that's a good option. They're indirect, so there's no exposed flames. It you know just needs to vent out the wall. That's then that's good. that brings up a big good point. Like uh, up north, these big snow years. I mean, we've had that. Remember the tiny tiny house we rented for years had that little run eye. Oh yes, thing blew us out. Yes, but a big snow year, you got to keep your vents cleaned. Always look on that. You know, yep. and that that's that's true with like, you know, your propane um, water heater these days, your propane boilers, your your floors yep. like. But I'm a, I'm a fan of propane heat mm-hmm. just because you don't have to worry about your fuel tank being outside, gelling yeah. up, stuff like that. Uh, there are in kerosene. There's still plenty of kerosene heaters out it there. Stinks. But it's, it's yeah. It's Kerosene's stinks. yesterday. That's old school technology. Yeah. But it's, it's a good if you need it. And I, what I liked about these camps, so if, it sounds like, you know, this camp, she's been there. She's on her childhood lake. Start making that. Start making small investments so when you're ready to make that thing year round, you yeah. know? Get to that point where then you just come through and spray foam it. And then, you know, we love spray foam. Spray yes. foam is the best way to meld old and new. And once you get to that point, then you're ready for the heat yeah. pump. But And you can do it in stages. Come in and do your floors. Do it under your sills, you know, of the camp. And then you go in and you do your walls. Upgrade some windows. Yep. But, you know, and I've never been a Woodscove guy because I'm always on the go, you know. But there's, she's right. There's nothing like 
having a wood stove there for the novelty of coming in when it's cold up and cranking it up and drying stuff off. But there's, to, a, there's a lot involved with that because right. then you have to have a chimney. You have to make sure it's cleaned. You have to have the wood. You have to deal yeah. with the ash. Yeah. And back to heat pumps. I mean, everybody thinks they're great because they're heating and cooling. But a lot of times, too, in the summertime, you want your windows open. You know, you right. want that summer Fresh breeze air, yeah. that wa- coming off the water. So if you have the cooling, you're kind of just counteracting mm. that. So, But it's, it's good to have a couple of systems. Yeah. But I think building up to the heat pump is yeah. a good way to go because, you, you know, you're going to winterize it. You're going to insulate it well so that it's going to be efficient. And a good Renier Empire heat is, a, is perfect. Yeah, and a lot of them now you can control remotely. You can get a thermostat put on the wall or, you know, over your phone. It's crazy. So now we finally have good Wi-Fi at our house. So we have, um, we're getting this thing. You can, our floors from our boiler, yeah. propane boiler, talk to the heat pumps now. And they all work in tandem. And because we have so much solar gain, yeah, you know, what, what the front room gets up to like 75. Right. So technology, yeah. And that's a good airflow too. Yeah. You know, as long as you have good airflow... It's going to help move the heat around, whereas if you have a heat pump or a heat source in one room, if it's a small cabin, it's sectioned off. You know, you may need to have some electric baseboard, yeah. you know, in your bathroom to keep pipes from freezing, that type of stuff. And electricity is the price is right these days for the most part. Yes. Hopefully, we did a good job. Yeah. Okay. We would have done a better job if we had pictures. <laughs> <laughs> blueprints. Blueprints help. Uh, on a cocktail napkin. Are you ready for the next building one? permits? Yes, we're ready. Stop asking for weird things. <laughs> it's not weird to ask for building permits. Keep going. This one's from Bob Cornett. Hey, Bob. How do I jack and level a large 150-year-old farmhouse? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Call a professional. Yeah, that's we. That's this, um, this is you, a situation where. We need pictures. more details. <laughs> yeah, um, Bob, if you're in retirement and looking for like a couple year project, you find a God point and you go to that. And it's usually where you're, if you have an old farmhouse, you have a center chimney, you know where the hearth is. Usually your house is falling down around that or sinking around that. You yeah, know? find the immovable structure and build from yeah, there. Right, and then you come, you work your way to Truly. it. And if you have time, you, you, it could take you years. You know, but just do it right and the, like we say, you know, you want to, now you want frost protection yep. or just keep adding shim. It's an old farmhouse and you live with it. Yeah. I just went through this with our place. I put a covered porch around the front and the side and it's got an old ground, granite foundation and I, you know, I shot the level and one corner, it m- matched up pers- perfectly. And by the time I got to the other end, there was maybe an inch of sill where the you know where the ledger plate and the sill met That's up well was, within your tolerances. Well, no, there was, but it was granite down below oh, and it stuck so, out. Oh, okay. So I had to build or I had to Scott. get metal um, brackets to hold that ledger plate on that part. But the whole house, the whole house goes up probably three to four inches from one corner to the other, where the deck is perfectly level. So you just live with We've it. We've done that before. You've built these new structures. <laughs> Maggie, what's your take? Um, your house is is. That's that's tolerant, but I mean, we've all been in some old hot farmhouses. Like, oh gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, some yeah. of the old houses in college people rented, like that would blow your mind that people lived in those. Oh yeah. So in the base, it's you know our place. It's an old dirt basement. Again, stone, yeah, don't go down stone there. and rock foundation. It's got old trees, old logs as the posts, and it's sitting on some of the old um, field grind stone. wheels. Oh, re- from my from my mom's place. Yeah, which you know was built in the 1850s. My mother, my mother's place was an old. Mill, Sith uh, factory. Yeah, right. Sai and Sorry. Sword factory. So they had grindstones. And then when they got too small, they would just cast them off. And so they made their way to the farmhouse and they were just, instead of pox, they were instead ho- of pox, they used the old grindstones. That's awesome. Yeah. Our house is being held out by a tree and a rock. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much you could say that about every, every house. house. Trees and rocks. But what's but like cool? an old tree and an old rock. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Maggie, you haven't seen anything. You you need to get in some more basements. Like a used tree. In I've been in some basements, or your dad and I have been in basements where it, you know, now every, it's four feet on center. It's a half of a six six inch round log cut in yeah. half, and then like a cedar post here. Yeah. Um, it's a it's amazing. Like if you look in the old farmhouse, it's amazing how you build now. Yes. Yeah. Well, even the cabins too. It's like you used what you had, and if you had trees around that were 
semi straight and you needed a good base, you there use you go. trees. Don't go in the basement. Give me I oh. already don't. <laughs> it's so scary down there. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, how's the new porch? Fantastic. It look awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. Are the rabbits going to be on the porch? They, they the, are not. They are the covered porch. Nope. Rabbits are going to be outside. They're in the. They're in with the chickens right now. Oh, that's perfect. Oh that's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, not, a, it's, it's a, not perfect. It's a, it's a very large covered porch. That's awesome. Yeah. You're gonna grow old in your rocking chair, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yelling at Fletcher over there. Don't put my tools back. <laughs> so new. We had a New Year's party, and at one point, all the kids were out. We were inside. I went outside, and all the kids were sitting on the porch, pretending to be old, and they're just sitting there in the chairs, and they're just yelling different stuff. Oh. And Evelyn and Isaac were there. And what we're, you know, they're just saying, oh, you young whippersnappers, all this stuff. <laughs> and Evelyn, Fletcher's cousin, co- Maggie's cousin, who's what, in first or second grade? She's five or set six, yeah. And she's a bit fired. She, at one point, she screams, she looks over, she goes, get your nerdy ass off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, whoa, 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 lady. <laughs> I'm like, I've never heard any old person <laughs> yell nerdy ass. <laughs> I'm going to save that one for yeah. my neighbors. But, it, no, it's a nice porch. It's awesome. Okay. Are you ready for your last one? We are. Waiting okay. on you. Jacob Schultz. We recently purchased a seasonal cabin in the Belgrade Lake, the Belgrade area. Have never lived on a lake or in Maine. We aren't sure what we can and can't do near the water. Currently, the view is obstructed by large pine trees on the edge of the lake and lots of smaller bushes in between the lake and the cabin. What can we do to open up our view? I feel like wow. this is a setup. <laughs> he he secretly, the, he works for DEP. Uh, but, you know, if you would have asked us five year season one, maybe like, I'd do go for it, beg, beg for forgiveness. But we've learned a lot. And one thing I've learned, I've told people, you can cut trees down. You can do. You can do more than you can. You think you can on the shoreline. The shoreline is very protected. You know, it's a shoreland zoning. You know, and in different increments from the shoreland, it gets you know less and less restrictive. But go slow. You know, take the time. And a lot of times, you get, you just have to document it and get your permits. And I would say this is definitely an instance where ask permission and beg forgiveness. Don't apply. No, it doesn't apply. It doesn't You've apply. got to make sure you're doing it right because the laws have changed so that you will, you know, you'll have to replant. And what's the biggest thing we've learned, Chase, since we started? Come on, baby. baby. Oh, gosh. The, the biggest thing about laws. Ask before you get started? Close. What is it? Town laws oh, can be. Town laws supersede state laws. I never. Th- every town is every different. Every town. Every town is different. Some towns, they don't give a hoot. Yep. Other towns yep. are way more strict than the state. Yep. But you can elevate, which is what, you know, when we have pinnacle tree come in, they mm-hmm. elevate, which yep. means they cut some of the branches up. But we learned sometimes you have to leave two-thirds. Yep. Sometimes you can take yep. two-thirds. And now, too, with, you know, there's so many massive trees in the shoreland zone that, you know, you can, if you work with the town, you can take them down. You know, you'll have to replant, but... If it's something that's an obstruction or dangerous or dead or diseased. And it's a good time to um, push out. We do do some consulting. We have a lot of um, time. Not, we don't do this by choice, but over the time, all the... You just, we, you just said we have a lot of time. No, no. no we put a lot of time <laughs> into um, shoreland zoning and doing the... It's called a permit by rule. Yes. So reach out to us, um, Jen at maincountmatch.com, if you want us to do some consulting, and we can help you with those permits. Far, sure. what's, your, what's your email address? J Reese. J Reese. If it's something you don't want to deal with, we have a lot of time and expertise um, in this. Yeah, and you know, yeah, and there's there's point systems. There's there's a lot you can do. But you just have to make sure you follow. Start with your town. Follow, follow, the and rules. start with DEP. Yeah, and if it's a dead, dead, diseased, dangerous, or dangerous, you know, you have a little bit of leeway there. And a lot of times, you might with the point system. You might not have enough points in that area, but you could talk to someone with the state and say this tree, and then you might you would have to mitigate that and plant so many other trees. But yeah. it's all about doing your homework or calling Chase and having him do it for you. <laughs> Someday it'll be Maggie. No. <laughs> it won't ever be me. Oh, you say that. She's going to be in right this chair right, someday. Right, we'll be on the right. corner hacking on Get your nerdy ass back to I work. I am not. Ab- <laughs> if, I need some more insurance. If you find me ever consulting on a tree, just 
I don't know. Kill me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for those questions. Keep the project pointers coming. Again, the more details and photos you have, the better we can answer. All right. You're just going to stare at me? Yep. Not going to introduce what we're doing? I think you know we're what we're doing. waiting for you for some yeah. questions, right? Fan questions. I know what we're doing. Well, all right. Move. Okay. Are you ready? I thought you were executive producer here. Come on. I'd like an introduction, you know, let everyone okay. know what I, we're this doing. This is Maggie. I, and now we're on to fan questions with Maggie. Executive producer, Maggie Morrow. <laughs> this first one is from Joy Kiernan. Why do you guys never flip the refrigerator door around in any of your episodes? <laughs> I was reading that online the other day. We are over budget by then. Over time. And it'd be on, yeah, we it's it's just we have to get on. And if if you can't change a refrigerator door And a lot of times we buy used We don't put anything in them, we don't even look. Yep. It's go, go, go. Yep. Not to, yeah, I don't want to sound rude, crass or something, but it's the last thing on our mind. We are just trying to get that thing done. I mean, honestly, we're happy if the refrigerator fits in the space. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. That's the last thing we look at. It, like, truly, truly, truly. We have so many other things to worry about. It is. Yeah. And there's no beer in it. Because if, if there was, if we put beer in that before, we'd use it. We, they, we, don't, we don't even plug it in. Because half the times we don't know when the homeowner's going to get there. Yep. Like, so it's just sitting there. But it's so funny how everyone notices that. It's true. And we appreciate that you guys see small stuff like that. But nope. that, that, those are the honest And it's one of those jobs anyone one. can do, and it's a pain in the butt. Yep. I hate doing it. Yep. And a lot of times, like I said, it's used equipment, and sometimes it's difficult. And, but And a lot of times, you know, we, we can't have contact with the homeowner, and we're, we're, like, at the end of our budget, so we'll get to use something used, knowing that the homeowner's going to come in. They got this brand new camp. They might want something nice and fancy. So we don't put any time. Time and effort. Has a homeowner asked us to come back and change it? Of course. We always, that's one thing. Let's talk about that. People don't realize the punch list we get. Yep. People be like, where have you guys been to you and I? Like, oh, we've been on a punch list. Or like, I've had Doug or you've had, like, you spend a lot more time than I do on a punch list. I mean, we always try to have a camp 100% complete. I don't, I'd say maybe. 20%? 20%? That that's even being generous. Feeling uh, generous in the new year. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, we try to get as much done as possible, but there's always nine times out of ten going to be something we need to go back and finish right. up. And if they ask us to switch the door, we might we do it. Correct, correct. Depends how long the punch list is. Yeah. And how old the fridge is. But I, I do love how you guys see everything. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a testament to how awesome our fans are. Yes. Keep, keep up with the good questions. Okay. Next one is from Shirley Jensen. It sounds like you guys have some time off this winter. Do you have any vacations planned with your families? Do you guys do vacations together? Both. Both. I just got back from vacation. Ashley and I went to Puerto Rico. Yep. You guys are going up. We are going to Iceland in February. Nice. Yep. I've been told we need to watch, uh, what's it, Eurovision? It's on Netflix. It's got uh, Will Ferrell and I can't think of the lady's name, but it's about the Iceland... Eurovision. Team. Oh, oh! It's the um skating. Is it skating? It's not skating. It's not skating, but it's singing. It's singing. But yeah, since we've been a family, we've yeah, gone yes. to some awesome places. Like I was saying earlier, like I always went out west skiing. That was my thing. I loved it. But you know, since I met you, I didn't have a passport before I became a moral <laughs> in heart. And uh, we've been to like where have we been? We've been to Gua we started out in St. Thomas. Yep. Um, Guadalupe. It, Guadalupe, Italy, Costa Rica. Uh, we went to South America. We went to Dubai. Like, yeah. We went to Seattle. Like, we we've been very we lucky. We didn't go to South America. Guadalupe. I mean, South, South, I'm Guadalupe sorry. South France. Africa. I'm sorry, Africa. We went to South Africa. Sorry. Yeah, but it's it's not in. France. We need to go to South Africa. It's not South, South America. America. I'm sorry. I not meant South Central Africa. America. I was just so excited Caribbean. talking about our time together with Maggie. But yes, we do. We definitely travel. Well, as much as we can, it's a little, still a little up and down this this year, but yeah. we'll definitely take another big family trip. Um, you know, we love winters in Maine, so there's always ice fishing, skiing, snowmobiling. I got a funny story. So Dakota, Dakota is one of the young kids that worked for us. Now he's such a good kid. We're so lucky to have him, love him. And sometimes people have a hard time with us because we're so laid back. You know, he told me a story today. He goes, "Hey, Ryan, I just want to tell you, and like, um, you know, I'm gonna be go." I'm gonna do you mind if I go with my girlfriend snowboarding this weekend? I'm like, heck yeah, that's awesome. You can take a long weekend. He goes, yeah, I was going to take Monday too. I was like, that's awesome. I go, 
I go, we we are all about taking time with family and friends. And like all we ask is you to give us 24 hours notice so we yeah. can move people around. He goes, and he's still so shy about it. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I was working with Chase all weekend. I didn't know what to say. And Chase just like, of course, like. <laughs> he asked me. He and already asked me. I'm he like, still yeah, can't course. believe it, though. <laughs> he still can't. He's, I, don't, I think like his last job, I think, was just like yeah, 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 more, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, like but just I mean, big business, but. When we're uh, when when it's not filming season, we encourage people to take time off, and we don't worry about like how, like what you're doing. Like we all, it all works out, you know. Yep. Like yep. when we need all, all need to be there, we're there. But it, but yes. spending time with your family and family is the most important. Like, and, and and taking side projects, you know, doing stuff that you promised, right? Friends and family, you'd get to, and this is the time to do it. Yeah, because like well, a lot of like BT, J, like Brad, like even Brad's getting, you know, a good hit, friends and family. Like, you know, go do your thing for a while. We all come back together. We need it. Yeah. Like, I guess we take it for, we really sometimes take it for granted like how good we have and how laid back we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget it, anybody listening. <sighs> God, I just pictured him. He's just so funny. <laughs> I had like so it's funny when we hired the car. I was like, just so you know, like he's, all, he's so he's you know he's teaching these classes. He's very hands on, and he does some really fine stuff. I was like, listen, we're not we do cool stuff, but we're not doing fine, fine. Yeah, we're, you're gonna learn a lot from us, but just don't. And you know, and it's been fun. He, you know, see, to see him to see that. Like, oh yeah, oh absolutely, absolutely. Because I think things. you can live a whole life and not do what we do, and and not have a. And be strict and not have the attitude we do and have fun with it. Yeah. There's something to be said about that. Yeah, you gotta have fun. Boys wanna have fun too, Maggie, not just girls. <laughs> you know that song, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun? Yeah, I do. Okay, just checking. Okay, that's all I have for questions today. All right, that's it for questions. Then we are on to new merchandise promotion. Today we have some birch baskets by Go Rustic. They're made in Maine, and Tony uses. Forged items to create all of his designs. And now forage means, oh, look at those. That's pretty cool. Those flowers, huh? Yeah, he uses pine. Stuff he's gotten from the forest. Pine cones to make. Yeah, he salvages the birch bark and weaves them together. Nails the bottom in. They're pretty solid. Really nice pieces of art. He also does the um, handles. Oh, the door handles. Everybody who comes in the store says, oh, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. It's not easy. No, you go out in the woods and like... You have to find the perfect branch. Then you have to cut it the right way. Then you have to bring it home, plane them down. Have you seen that guy <laughs> over in Europe that um, makes uh, uh, furniture out of trees? I mean, it takes 30 years. Oh, where he bends them and yes, stuff? Yes, so yes, cool. yes. Have you ever seen that? Nope. Oh, it's very cool. I think I was thinking about making a reel, you know, a 30-year reel. Is that what they're called, right? Little videos? Online? <laughs> making reels? <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> Also. But you can find these birch baskets made by Go Rustic and all sorts of new products in our store, shop.kennebeckcabincompany.com. And his handles make it in a lot of episodes. They're really cool. They, they're they so handy. Whether you need a towel rack, you need just a handle to get up a doorstep or on a screen door. There's two on the uh, doors to go into the tent out of the woodshed. Which is awesome. Yeah, and if you guys haven't been to Hangar, we got we got heat in the Hangar now. Um, we got a full lineup. It's pretty awesome to see the woodshed getting, getting more energy. Like, you know, we just were so busy, and we didn't have a heater yet. We're trying to figure out how to, like, keep that energy going. And, you know, going into holidays and shopping, things slow down. People aren't out. You know, you're spending time doing other stuff. But we've had open mic night. It's fun to see, like, come alive in there. And the girls that are – it's really cozy in there. Like, yeah. it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of good stuff. It's hard there. to beat the fire pits. I no. mean, there's nothing better than having a beer and standing around a fire pit. Some snow would be nice. Yes, yes, yes. And I saw one guy came to the, on a snowmobile. I think Cole probably put first snowmobile here, gets a free beer. Some, <laughs> there was sparks flying. Derek Owen, congratulations. Probably wasn't Jack Morrill. <laughs> <laughs> probably wasn't this guy. He said his name was Tony. Coming down from Guinness. <laughs> <sighs> Good times. Yeah. All right. Well, now we are on to trivia questions. I remember that was like a month. I don't remember what it is. No, I don't either. What it was. Okay. Luckily, I do. Um, what American president went to Bowdoin College? Garfield. What do you say? I would have said Joshua Chamberlain, but only a governor. Taft. Franklin Pierce. Huh. He didn't go to Franklin Pierce College? What the hell? <laughs> 
Wow, that was so funny. <laughs> All right, so now we are on to the new trivia question. Okay. What is the smallest cetacean found in the Gulf of Maine? Crustacean? Nope. Is this a citation? Is that like a, is that like a it's t- ticket it's, from the cop? It's, it's spelled C-E-T-A-C-A-N. Oh. I was going to say, Ashley used to own a citation with a Ferrari engine. Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Call Stova. C E T A C E A N. I know what Cetacean. it means, but I'm not telling. Would it, would it give it away? I think it's an. Mm, it's the oceanic insect. Probably with exos- not. Oceanic. It has to do with the ocean. Well, duh. It's, it's an oceanic insane. insect with an exoskeleton. All right. If you know the it's answer. It's not an insect. Cetacean. It has a it has a skeleton. They have a skeleton. All right. I've got a guess. I have no clue. So anyways, I'll think about that while I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. If you know the answer and you're the first person to put it on the... Send an email to our lovely friend at podcast at maincabinmasters.com. You will win a lovely prize. Correct, Jen? You will. Great. True. I have a list on my desk. I still haven't sent any out. New Year's resolution. I have a list. Well, excellent. Thank you again for joining us, everybody. Thanks for listening and all the questions. Thank you, Andrew Silsby, for joining us. Thanks, guys, and thank you to our sponsors, Nelma Hero Media Network, Hammond Lumber Company, Kennebec Savings Bank, and From the Woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.